let's see, where are we? Yes, industrial heartland. When I say industrial heartland, what comes to mind? What do you think of? Well, almost everybody in America would think of the Midwest. They think of, I don't know, Michigan, Wisconsin. Uh, they think of Illinois. Uh, they think of Ohio, right? This is the industrial heartland of America. This is where industrial plants and we build stuff from cars to, to machines to steel to, to all of that stuff. This is industrial heartland. And yet, that has changed over the last, what is it, 40 years. The industrial heartland of the United States has actually shifted. Today, in our world today, um, there, is a, there is just as much manufacturing, heavy manufacturing that you associate with industrial in the American South as there is in the Midwest. So today, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, South Carolina, and of course, Texas, that's where the action is. That's where the industrialization is happening. Uh, today, there's many industrial workers in the South as they are in the Midwest. Uh, you know, starting in the 1980s, companies like uh, Nissan, uh, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, all built plants in the Midwest. They did not go to Michigan, partially to avoid unions and partially because the Midwest, still to this day, has relatively low energy costs, generally has low living costs, and uh, has a significant amount of labor. Indeed, the biggest problem in the South today is a shortage of labor. What is super interesting about this is that Biden's uh, uh, projects, uh, Biden has passed a number of big bills that involve huge, massive, uh, multi-billion, uh, by the way, thank you, Bjorn, we'll get, we'll get to Bjorn in a minute, but he, he just took us way past our goal for today. But, you know, um, um, he has passed these bills that involve massive investments and massive subsidies for industrialized, for industrialized progress, whether it's uh, EV batteries, electric cars, uh, or whether it's solar panels, or whether it is um, chip manufacturing. And almost all those investments are going into the South. Now, some are going into the Midwest, but most of them are going to the South. Uh, what is it? Toyota is building this factory that is the size of 1,200 football stadiums, football fields. That's, that's the, just the size of it. And they're building it in Kentucky, right? And it's going to produce EV batteries, right? Um, so, you know, all of, these, uh, all of these subsidized projects are going to the south. And what's interesting about that politically, if you think about pork barrel, pork barrel is where congressmen get the administration to, to, to hand over the pork to districts that support them. And here almost all the pork barrel is going to Republican districts, which is super <laughs> Interesting, and probably not what Biden intended. But that is a fact. He didn't say to companies all over the world, if you, if you build these factories, we'll give you subsidies only if you do it in democratic districts. Maybe he should have had that. But he said, if you build it, we will subsidize it. So they're building, and they're building all over the place. Chips, mostly Arizona. Land is cheap. Um, water might be a problem, but land is cheap. Energy is relatively cheap. And seismically stable, not like California, and close to California, close to California, where they need the tech and they can get uh, people moving there with the, with the skills. But uh, electric cars, electric batteries, all of that, mostly Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, south, the south. Um, funnily enough, maybe funnily is not right, ironically enough, guess why Guess why electricity is so cheap in those places? It's cheap because Kentucky, for example, produces 70% of electricity using coal, coal that they dig right there, right? Uh, so a lot of these uh, high-tech factories, EV and everything, who are supposed to be clean, 
<laughs> actually using electricity produced by coal. Not exactly goes consistently with, with, with how they're thinking. Anyway, uh, here we are. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do, a lot of the, the, the energy around the South has to do with where people are moving to. Uh, it's not as much about unions anymore because only 6% of America's private sector workers are, union, are unionized as of 2022. So unions are not a factor really much anywhere. Um, but Texas has a lot of people moving into it. Uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Carolinas are major magnets of people moving there, not just retirees, but working age people. And if anything, there is a shortage of labor in all these places in spite of people moving to them. But if they open up something in the Midwest, those are states that are shrinking and the labor shortages are much larger. So I just thought it was interesting. Industrial heartland, no longer the Midwest, but the South. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.